organizations, open source has enabled that. Uh, but the, the other side of that is that we do have uh, some challenges, as we have with any software in terms of vulnerabilities. And the software supply chain is under attack. So, so uh, and this is the diagram to take a result, some people are familiar with this. I've got only got 20 minutes to go, so I'm going to go this in depth. But we know there are challenges uh, in terms of uh, you know, bad dependencies, bypass code reviews, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to go into that today, but uh, there are definitely challenges. And those are led to some significant um, uh, challenges, significant outages, ransomware, et cetera, headlines, and you're in, in this uh, uh, business, you know, uh, it's, it's an everyday occurrence. Uh, and actually, the log shell, which I'll talk a little bit about later, was, was a real uh, uh, several moment in terms of uh, realizing uh, how important open source software is and, and what we should be doing in terms of securing the software supply chain. So, why now? Why is this important? What are we doing? Uh, is that we are at the uh, at center stage. So, open source flows through software supply chains into every application. Whether you know it or you don't know it, it's there. Uh, security is critical. So we've developed this trillions of dollars. I work at Linux Foundation. I'm 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 two projects, my college and of but there's many other projects, and we have this trillions of dollars of innovation, shared innovation has happened. So we need to uh, protect that and share software brings shared responsibility. As I said, it's a community activity what we're doing at Messenger. Um advice Adversaries are winning, so there's increased tax. Um, what you mentioned in the other slide, I read that seven hundred percent increases every year in terms of supply chain attacks on open source. Um, and gun violence action. And I'm going to talk specifically about a, an activity that was driven initially by the White House um, around federal public policy uh, and see and basically helping the industry in terms of what they have to do. Okay, so to to put it in a nutshell of what we need to do, we need to prove um, the, what we need to prove from ad hoc security, which is kind of the standard way of doing things, to some kind of system, system security. So what we need is better tools to measure the trustworthiness of the code based on objective measures. So when you get something like source account, you trust it was an objective standard, uh, but that is uh, trustworthy or not within some kind of network. Processes that encourage better security practices by developers. So how can we get developers involved? And tools and processes that encourage teamwork and shared responsibility for security. And add by default. This should be default in everything that everyone does. It should be ingrained in how open source developed and used in order to make it secure. So this is where the organization that I'm representing, the Open Source Security Foundation comes. I'm not sure we're into the chat room for us, but it's the chat GPT. Maybe that means other things. We're going to the chat, um, and uh, you can say that the Linux Foundation established this organization in 2020. The OpenSSF is a global initiative securing investment, resources, and expertise to measure and prove the security of open source software and the software supply chain. And we bring together uh, cybersecurity and open source software leaders building an array of different technology initiatives to help with this course, particularly around open source software security and software, open specifications, and open education resources. I'm going to touch on some of those within my next 12 minutes. And other products and activities that build cybersecurity capacity and reduce global cybersecurity and security risk. These are our, our, our members. We have a very strong uh, support. These are our premier members. Right? We should be going for just uh, over a few years, and we kind of hit in the middle of the pandemic, right? So we have a very, very strong support uh, from the likes of AWS, uh, from Google, likes of Huawei, the banks Goldman Sachs, I think JP Morgan, IBM, Sneak. I mean, I think you know most of these organisations, right? And this is just a growing list. These are premium members. We also have a long list of our general and associate members uh, from many, many different sort of financial institutions, people like Coinbase, Investing, Goldman Sachs, uh, and in, I've just picked out two here, Scandis, who came, uh, who are a startup here, uh, who are work who are at Singapore, Scandis, and also we have Nanyang Technology University, is one of our associate members as well. Uh, and it's just a list, so if you want to come member or associate, uh, 
come and talk to the associates and uh, non, uh, uh, non, uh, non profits and, and governments and the chair members of corporate corporates. This is how we look. We have a governing board, technical advisory committee, we have different um, organizations that, that, that come off those, um, and we have a bunch of user groups. So I'm going to go through very quickly, but I will ask you uh, to go uh, to our GitHub, go to uh, OpenSSF, and you can go have a look and get involved. This, this is all. Uh, for, for our community, right? Um, and we have two other kind of key projects, Alpha and Amiga, I'm going to talk a little about, and six uh, to, uh, to, to kind of key projects as well there. So this is our OpenSSF working groups. We have a best practices working group. And these are all available on GitHub. Uh, you can uh, record on YouTube, uh, all the meetings. Uh, it's all, all minute, it's all available. Obviously, I live in Hong Kong. Uh, we're on the wrong side of the planet sometimes. <laughs> a lot of these are different time zones, so quite what I do, and I'm very open to see what we, else we can do here to assist and do other things within this time zone, uh, which is very important, right? Uh, and that's what I'm working with. So, best practices we have a best practices fair scorecard, MFA, uh, you know, non factor distribution to some of the key projects. Uh, we have a bunch of training, vulnerability disclosures. We've had a great guide uh, to coordinated vulnerability disclosure for open source software projects. Uh, if you know the Lofa J, how it's founded by Ali, then distributed, you know, and, and there was had some challenges with, with where that came out. So we're trying to see how we can make that uh, more clear and explicit. And, 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 and as, as with everything, continuous improvement. Um, identifying security threats, security tooling, supply chain integrity. So the salsa, many of you know about salsa, that came from Google. Uh, so that's a, a framework for doing a sort of supply chain. Um, and then we have securing critical projects. We have a bunch of key projects to identify which are the most critical projects. As you know, we have millions of things, projects in GitHub, which are the important ones, which ones we should be looking at, uh, and which ones we should be protecting and helping. And then associated projects. I'm down to 10 minutes, so I'm going to go very, very quickly now. So this is the Alpha Amiga project. Alpha, as I know, the Alpha Amiga is one of the snus. So with the two sides, Alpha is a top. Uh, 20 projects, as you can see, we're already giving money to help Python, Rust, Eclipse, jQuery, Node.js, uh, help build their maturity capacity uh, for to repair and respond to security issues. Amiga, we're working on scanning the other, uh, another, the next 10,000 projects. So this is a project originated by, um, I think it was Google and Microsoft, along with AWS, for funding this. So that's one project. Uh, we have a lot of training. I mean, we've got Go and have a look. It's great. And by the way, this is for developing secure off software, not just open source software, but all software. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, just the 9% now, perhaps be open source software. So please go and have a look at that. Um, I'd like to take you a little bit into uh, some of the things that have been done uh, uh, at the end of the year or after the log for Jay um, and, and, uh, in terms of raising uh, the awareness. So as you all know, in 2021, we have Lot check kind of broke the, the internet. So deep down the stack, so basic, it was an issue for, for everyone. So uh, so basically the White House called in, um, led by other agencies, uh, uh, the the uh, ecosystem rights the largest open source and cloud infrastructure companies. So like the Google's AWS, some of the big banks, um, and uh, and, and Linux Foundation and OpenSSF. The Apache Software Foundation, and I think the kind of message was, this isn't the new norm, is it? <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. So the answer is, no, of course not. So, so as an industry, how do we collaborate to help open source software, which is now mostly pervasive software, become more secure? I don't want to say, so this is just a, this is a, we are a neutral place for this to happen, and uh, I only have a few minutes to talk about it. So we talk about three different areas securing open uh, source software production by helping developers have better tools to build better um, uh, software. Second, to improve vulnerability discovery. So let's go out and find more. There's many tools, maybe we should have better tools. It's continuously improving. And remediation, if we do find that, how do we then roll it out? And then the third area is a short ecosystem patching response time. I really, that's SBOL, SBOL, SBOL. How, how can we make sure? That we know patches are rolled out. So the three kind of goals that I identified uh, within the meeting that happened at the White House. 
And how that we developed uh, the open source uh, security mobilization plan, which is the first of its kind uh, to fully address. You can have a look at this. You might have, I have slides all of it, and I'm happy to take you through it. And we, along with our government war on our expert uh, community, uh, we define these, these areas in kind of about 150 million of funding. Of, of we have that. We're not a PC, we're not going to kind of round one. This is, this is about community. Um, uh, and these, these are the, the, the 10 different areas. Um, baseline security software development. So education, how can we take the education we have? We've got at universities, so health and education, the risk assessment, dashboard, OSS, digital signatures, deliver enhanced processing, Cisco, and kind of expanding it, replacing the non memory safe language, leaving things to rust. I said, I talked to somebody about doing that yesterday. Uh, open source security incident response team is going to help projects on incidents happen. And you know, there's bombs everywhere. I don't have time to go through it all. There's a lot of detail, and I'm happy to go through it. And this is a global effort uh, working on this. Uh, we then launched this uh, last year um, at a uh, cross section uh, of developers and commercially because it went to, uh, uh, and with federal agencies in the US, we reviewed the plan to get up to a high level, and uh, we actually got some funding from Vice Hansen, Eric, and Google, Intel, Microsoft, and Google, and some of this has been started to work with our government for in a very open fashion about how we spend that, that money. Things like code reviews, right, for some of the top projects. So um, I don't have time to go into that. But we're also in Asia Pacific, we did this in Japan as well, with agencies. Uh, I'm working with, with APAC countries, like our governments, uh, to help uh, to facilitate that, and also with open source communities around the region. So, no, I'm not going to go to depth. I'll go through this. <laughs> but we, I think this at another time. Um, here it is again. So, I think 150 million uh, is, is, is a lot of money. Uh, it's not really relative to, to, to the damage. Uh, and I block the J, I think it's measurable. Um, but just one instance at the Equifax uh, was, was uh, 700 was fine uh, for, uh, for one company, right? Uh, and now, FTC notices that if you, you know, if you have the, the, the impact, you may take enforcement action against business that failed to, to log the JDA hotspot. So, many other examples. So, in my last five minutes, I really want to say that we have lots of information. We have town halls. I said this is a great town hall we had um, with uh, some people from, from Microsoft uh, Anchor, uh, and Anchor and other organizations about updating. With S -bond to network. So, even if you're not in the same time zone, we can do stuff here. I would also like to do webinars, pick up experts here, so we can talk about this in our time. So, like, so uh, uh, maybe some things can come out of uh, uh, this part of the world. So, uh, it's a very open, it's, it's all available to everybody. Um, I'm organizing meetups. We've done a lot here in, in Singapore already with other our scanners, but I'm working with others to do that. We'll probably organize a meetup in about three, four weeks here, which everyone's welcome to come along to. And we'll start kind of engaging. We have a Slack group. Uh, you can see we did some more already in Tokyo, uh, some in Bangalore, uh, and uh, we shall continue doing that. And everyone is welcome to get involved. With volunteers, people get involved to help support uh, this effort. So, as I said, uh, you can visit our home. Uh, you can join as a member company if you're a corporate. As an individual, you can just get involved. Slack channels, mailing lists, working groups. We're all are welcome, and I'm always available on LinkedIn, Telegram, Slack, Nine, WeChat. <laughs> I'm everywhere, so we are always welcome uh, to help you. So there you are. Thank you. I think we've got like one or a minute left. <laughs>